This week on Houston Newsmakers, the danger of the holidays. Increased crowds as you wade into holiday shopping also means increased crime. We'll have expert advice this morning about ways you can avoid becoming a victim. And a plea for churches to help the children of the system, the foster care system, a call to work in hand and prayer to help the children and families of the welfare system. And racism in our community, it is time for nothing but the truth. It's a conversation we need to have. From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You have no idea how difficult it was for me not to sing that for you. The words of the traditional holiday Christmas classic, it's also the time of the year when crime goes up. Think about it, and it's easy to see why. Shopping malls and shopping parking lots fill up with cars and people by the thousands, and nothing attracts criminals like opportunities by the thousands, which is what shoppers represent. Here this morning to talk about some of the dangers and ways to avoid them is Officer James Sabota of the Houston Police Department. He's a 31-year veteran who helped create the Houston Loss Prevention Alliance. Thank you for being here. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. But what is the Loss Prevention Alliance? How did that start? Well, through the positive interaction program that we have here at the city, you know, we noticed that many years ago that officers would just respond to crimes that have already taken place. Mm -hmm. And really, we, we've noticed that when we re would respond to a crime, it took place on properties, big box stores, right. shopping centers, um, you know, the Walmarts, the Targets, and all your big grocery stores. So we have actually met with all the security directors, loss prevention directors. We sat down together, and what we have really determined that, you know, most of all these big box stores didn't want to talk about crime on the properties. Mm -hmm. But we went in, and what we determined is that, you know, they're all sharing one thing. And what they're sharing are criminals, mm -hmm. because these criminals go where the money's at, go where they can, you know, do their crimes. Speaking of that, when people go out and shop, what's the biggest piece of advice you give to people when they're going out? You say, okay, this is what you need to do to be safe. What's the biggest piece of advice? The biggest advice that we give everybody that when they go shopping, getting gas, or just driving around, is staying alert. That's the biggest key to it. Put the cell phones down, put every, don't text, and stay focused when you're out in public. There's a lot more to talk about. I want to get more into detail about some of the, the most important ways to avoid being a, uh, a victim of crime. But first, you know, it's, uh, Channel 2 Investigates teamed up with security experts to show you just how fast a car break-in can occur. Robert Arnold reveals the methods they're using and simple ways you can avoid becoming a victim. And it was so fast. Carolyn Waddingly easy, thought she was being easy. careful. Waddingly and her sister were shopping in the Galleria area last Christmas. Their truck was loaded with gifts, but they needed to make one stop before they went home. My sister's like, you know, I need some gift wrap and I want to bring this thing to get framed. I said, right here. Waddingly says she found a well-lit spot right in front of the store. Oh, if we have things in the car, no one's going to stop and rob us in front of this well-lit store. That assumption proved wrong. A thief broke the window and made off with the package. Bah humbug. <laughs> Do you think a lot of people have a false sense of security being in a parking lot like this? They think there's a bunch of people walking around that, you know, hey, nobody's going to come and steal something. Paul Grant runs TRS, a company that safeguards vehicles against thieves and repairs theft-related damage. He helped us with a little demonstration. Okay, that's recording. We set up hidden cameras inside two vehicles owned by Grant's company. Okay, that's recording. We put one vehicle in a crowded west side parking lot and loaded it with bags and a backpack. Grant walks up to the car and a single push of a screwdriver breaks the window. Grant grabs the bags and calmly walks away. This entire faux theft took 20 seconds, and in this busy parking lot, only one person saw what happened. I didn't really know what to think. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. I and mean, I was already in and out of the car before she could get her phone up to dial anybody. Now we're on to a Galleria area parking lot, and this pickup, Grant saunters up, uses a screwdriver to pop the lock. A little work on the steering column, and... Our fake truck theft took all of 45 seconds. This time, no one noticed anything. What are the main things a thief looks for when they go to a parking lot like this? I think opportunity is probably your number one thing. That means don't leave anything in your car. Take it home or put it in the trunk. While it may not stop a thief, do try to find crowded, well-lit areas. Parking in remote spots only makes you more of a target. Lastly, make sure no one is following you. Remember Waddingly? Not anybody could have... Um 
just taken that bag, known exactly where it was without following us. Robert Arnold, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Boy, that touched on a lot of things you talk about. This it. is something we see all the time. You got these packages, you put them in the back seat, or you don't you think about it and just walk away, and that's criminals. They say, okay, that's my place. What about the trunk? Sometimes you can put them in the trunk and that may not matter if somebody breaks your car window and goes in and pops your trunk. This is absolutely true. Uh, you know, people have a false sense of security. When they go shopping, they say, well, I'm gonna put things in the trunk and I'm okay because I'm gonna go to the next store and nobody will see me. But what a lot of these crooks will do is they'll follow you. In other words, if you're in a, in a store where you're buying expensive items, maybe a, a laptop or some type of electronics, they may follow you and they know that, you know, many of us have a long shopping list of different locations to shop. So um, you think you're okay when you travel to the next store. Well, these criminals know that you maybe have a laptop or iPad or something. They will follow you. They will break the lock, pop your trunk lot, and take your item. So you got to be careful. Keep your head on the swivel. You've done videos in the past. I want to show one, too, that shows a woman in the, in, the, in the grocery store. It's one of the things about just being aware of what goes on. Just somebody shopping, looking the wrong direction or looking away for a second and just like like that, the purse is lifted, and that's one of the things you talk about, about being aware. Yes. The then that's just not only in the grocery store. Yes, it's outside the stores and also in the inside the stores that uh, you had mentioned. You know, many many times when when we're shopping, uh, what we see is ladies that will put their purse um, like this, and this is a nice purse. Uh, many times, ladies will take their purse and put it on the shopping cart. And some of these thieves, when they see an expensive purse like this, uh, they work in teams sometimes. Some sometimes when you're shopping, you're looking at some items, maybe the price or the ingredients. Sometimes people, they, when they work together, they will get your attention mm -hmm. and they will uh, ask you some question and the other person is actually taking your purse. So the, the key is to not only be aware, but make sure you keep that purse close to your body and not be... Yes, we advise if you have to carry a purse, uh, have it on your shoulder because many times they'll grab this and as you're being distracted, they will take your purse and before you, you turn around, that person is already outside the store. Uh, this, the video that's running now is, is, is about a different topic, which is about sliders when somebody, if you're not paying attention, if you can roll that back, Ray, and run that again. The, when somebody just pulls up to a gas pump, for example, they, they got to pay attention there as well, right? This, you talk about sliders, somebody actually goes in your car while you're pumping gas. Yes, this is a term that we use is called sliders. And many cases, and we have surveyed, we have sat back, we watch, and we're not picking on anybody, but many cases when some of the ladies, they, they opened up their purses, they put their purses on the passenger side. Uh, they will actually open up the purse, get their credit card out. Many times we see them on the cell phones or they're texting, they'll go up to the gas pump and they will actually uh, sit there on the on, and pumping their gas. Well, what they didn't realize is, is their purse is open with their wallets out, unlocked. So these these criminals they'll they'll creep down and they'll come on the passenger side, slowly open up your door, and they will actually take your purse out. And maybe it will take you another minute or so to finish pumping your gas, get your receipt, come back in the car. You look and you're purse is gone. And people are making a big business out of that. You talk about how much it costs to replace the things that are in your life if you don't pay attention. We have done surveys with ladies that have really nice purses or men that have briefcases and on an average by the time you replace your purse, get new electronic keys, get new makeup, uh, or get new sunglasses, or some of the money you have in your purse, we're looking at about $2,000. And this is what $2,000 looks like, and this is basically what it's gonna cost to get it replaced. Well, we wanna thank you for coming in to give us some advice. Hopefully our viewers will listen to some of this and it'll help you stay safe. And it's clearly one of the issues that we have to keep our eyes on all the time. Thank you so much for coming in, officer. My pleasure, thank Appreciate you very much. It. By the way, we're gonna give you the uh, a, a link to the Houston Police Department website. You can get a lot of this information as well. If you can't get Officer Boda in, in person, you can always get it from there. <laughs> Thank you so much. For Thank you. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Hey, just ahead, one of the purest looks of joy. A foster child being officially adopted by a loving family, ending years of uncertainty in their lives. But what about those still in foster care? There is much they need and there's much you can provide. A special call for churches to help. That's next when Houston Newsmakers continues.